Welcome back to Old Man Van Running. Today's video is my first impressions review of the updated Hoka Arahi 6 Moderate Stability Daily Trainer. Today I'm out here on the Farmington Canal Trail in Cheshire, Connecticut on my third run in the all new updated Hoka Arahi 6. This is a minor update to last year's Hoka Arahi 5. And today I'm gonna to take it out for another run and I'll get back to you with my thoughts and first impressions. Um, it does feel a little bit lighter and it is a little bit lighter we'll get into the details they've kind of made some small modifications to the upper it's a little bit lighter so the shoe feels a little bit faster on the foot although midsole and outsole really no changes there so we get back in the house and we'll talk about the updated Hoka Arahi 6 let's go so I purchased this shoe about a month ago, right after its release. This is the update to last year's Hoka Arahi 5. Now, I was really curious to see if Hoka made any major changes to this shoe. What I found is that the changes are minimal, and you know, some of the areas I was concerned about, I don't know if Hoka has actually done anything that's gonna raise the bar. Now, if you recall from my first impressions review and my long-term review of the Hoka Arahi 5, I really like that shoe. I like the cushioning in it. I like the stack height. I like the J-frame stability feature. I like how it wasn't intrusive. And I just like that shoe. Problem I had with it, the main problem I had with it was outsole durability. Within 100 miles, I had almost worn through the outsole on the outside of my heel where I tend to heel strike. That to me was unacceptable. And now with that shoe, I've had to resort to using shoe goo on that outsole to extend its life. And I'm gonna tell you, right off the bat, Hoka has done nothing to change the midsole and the outsole on the Hoka Arahi 6. That is gonna be the same problem in this shoe as it was in the Hoka Arahi 5. So let's focus first on the numbers and then we'll get into the improvements before I go back to those things that I think Hoka missed the boat on. So the first thing is that Hoka lowered the weight of the Hoka Arahi 6. The Hoka Arahi 5 was I believe 9.7 ounces in a men's size nine. The Hoka Arahi 6 is down to 9.3 ounces. How did Hoka lower the weight of this shoe and the midsole and the outsole haven't changed. Well, specifically, Hoka shaved the weight in the upper. It's still a real nice engineered mesh upper, very soft, but they removed some of the 3D overlays on both the lateral side and the medial side of the shoe that were there to add a little bit of structure, but in this shoe really weren't necessary. Why weren't they necessary? Because the footbed in the Hoka kind of like the Saucony Guide 15, kind of sits into the midsole, and this has a really wide base. Therefore, you don't need a lot of 3D overlays in the upper to add structure uh, in addition to the stability features already in the shoe. So going into the other numbers, we've got a five millimeter heel to toe drop, 35 millimeter stack height in the heel, 30 millimeter in the forefoot, that's where you get your five millimeter heel to toe drop. And the shoe cost me $139.95 US. So right around $140, which is kind of right there, typical for daily trainers and stability daily trainers. So looking at this upper, it's very soft. 
the perforations aren't as apparent in the forefoot. So I don't know if this shoe is gonna be as breathable as its predecessor. We'll just have to see when the weather gets warmer. It does seem to be a little bit narrower in the toe box. I'm not certain if that's the case. When I compare it to my Arahi 5, it seems like it's just a little bit narrower. However, it still fits my foot, which takes basically a medium D width very well. My toes can still splay. I still feel like I have plenty of room. I also don't have any issues right here in the medial side of the foot. Um, the Arahi 4, I had hot spots and I had blisters and I had to return that shoe very quickly. Arahi 5, that was addressed. It also seems that that shouldn't be much of an issue in the Hoka Arahi 6. Going right into it, they've added some padding, some more padding around the ankle and the heel collar. You've got that same flare in the heel collar that protects your Achilles tendon, but a little more cushioning there, a little more comfortable. They've actually made the tongue more padded. It was a well padded tongue in the Arahi 5, but a little more padding in the Arahi 6. That's good. At the same time, they've reduced weight, so good job. The tongue is fully gusseted, so it's not gonna move around too much, which is a good thing. Just a very comfortable kind of sock light hugging feel to your foot. The insole on this shoe is removable, so that's good. But hey, you know what? This is a stability shoe, so really, you shouldn't have to add orthotics or other sock liners to this shoe. So the heel counter, very, very firm, very well padded, gives you a real, real good lockdown in the heel, so that's another good feature. But even with the firmness in that heel counter, I have no issues with my Achilles, and I think that's due to this real nice heel flare. Just some additional minor changes in the upper. You see this right here? This is some reinforced material here for these two eyelets. That wasn't there in the Arahi 5, and that's where a lot of the stress on those eyelets comes in when you're tying down your shoes. And, you know, that's to reinforce those areas so that over time, you don't wear through that and then those eyelets break loose. Now, onto something that, if you recall, I really like the Hoka's laces except for one thing. They were too darn long. Now, Hoka, I don't know if you listened to Old Man Van, or if you listen to all the other reviews, or many of the other reviews out there, that the shoelaces were a little bit too long. And if you recall from my first impressions video, I asked Hoka, you know, maybe just cut the length down a little bit to hit that sweet spot. Well, guess what? Hoka heard me, maybe indirectly, but Hoka heard me. And now the laces are just right. Before they were way down here. Now they're just right. And I am able to do my running lacing and I'm still able to double knot. So Hoka, thank you for making that change. Thank you for keeping those laces flat because flat laces to me are the types of laces that you get the best lockdown. Good job, Hoka. Just talking about the stability real quick. It's the same stability feature, the J-frame, that is in the Arahi 5, was in the Arahi 4 before. And that's just some firmer midsole material in a J shape around the shoe. So you see here, right here, it's this white material here. On the medial side, it goes all the way up to the forefoot and it follows a J shape right to about here on the lateral side. So you've got more of this firmer EVA midsole material. You can see it right here that wraps around uh, there's more of it on the medial side, which is the side where your foot rotates when you overpronate. I really like it. It's not intrusive. It's firmer, but it's not hard like a medial post like in the Guide 14. So Hoka, good job keeping what works in this shoe, not changing that. I like the J-frame and it still works. From a performance perspective, it's really not this midsole that gives you responsiveness in the Arahi 6 or the Arahi 5 or the Arahi 4. It's the early stage meta rocker, the early stage meta rocker. That really helps with giving you a smooth transition 
through the gate cycle and through toe off. I really like it. Instead of the midsole material being what gives you that responsiveness, it's that meta rocker that I find really makes this a smooth running shoe. And with its relatively lightweight, you can pick up the paces a little bit. So it is a shoe that I think is flexible in its use. You can use it for a nice long slow run because it's got plenty of soft cushioning, not marshmallowy soft, but nice soft cushioning. But you can pick up the pace in this a bit if you choose. It's a good all around daily trainer that has the flexibility to run at a variety of distances and paces. Now, back to that outsole. Still the same soft, grippy outsole material. Man, it really sticks to the ground, but that comes with one major drawback. It's soft, it's sticky, and it wears through so quick. No different than the Arahi 5. Right here on this portion of the shoe, on the other shoe, I heel strike a little bit more, it's already starting to wear down. And I've only got like three runs in this, not even 20 miles. So I'm gonna have to put some shoe goo right there and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Here's the Arahi 5, one of my Arahi 5 shoes. And see right here, it wore down before 50 miles right in this location. It's the same outsole material. And you see here how I've had to use shoe goo to extend the life of this shoe. So. I'm going to do the same thing on the Arahi 6, so I don't have to trash it after 100 miles. One last thing, this is not the most flexible shoe. It's not flexible, not flexible at all, but that's okay. And that's because of the early stage Meta Rocker. Because of that, you don't really need a lot of flexibility to help it toe off. So yeah, it's not that flexible, but the way your foot kind of just rocks and rolls through toe off makes that lack of flexibility not so much of an issue. How would I rate the all new, well, I wouldn't say all new, the updated Hoka Rahi 6? I would rate it on first impressions a 9.0. If I knew that Hoka had changed the formulation of that outsole to a much more abrasive resistant formulation, I would have given this shoe a higher score. Because they have not changed that outsole, I know I'm going to get extensive wear very quickly in that heel area. And for that reason, I've basically taken half a point off. The reason I'm still giving it a nine is, you know what, if I put a little shoe goo on there, I can extend the life of that. And as long as I haven't worn through that outsole, this is a great shoe. It's comfortable. It's true to size. I don't have hot spots. That was one other thing. It's a very comfortable shoe. It locks down really well. My foot doesn't move around. It's, even if it's a little narrower in the forefoot, my toes can still splay. So I really like it. It's really comfortable. And I like the five millimeter heel to toe drop. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you got to this point in the video, Thank you very, very much. That's impressive. If you like my review down below, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, it's okay to hit the thumbs down button. But if you have comments, positive, negative, constructive criticism, ideas on what I can do to make my channel and my videos better, please leave comments. I really do make every effort to respond to pretty much everybody who comments on my videos in a timely manner. And please, if you wanna see more videos on the Old Man Van Running channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. That will notify you when more videos are posted. So thanks again for watching this video. And remember, lace up your shoes and let's get out on the roads.